Chapter 5 The National Uprising of 1857 In 1857, there was a great uprising that shook the very foundation of the British rule in India. This uprising was not a sudden development. There had been many revolts against the British previously. The revolts before 1857 Wherever the British had established their power in India, people had to suffer the ill effects of British governance. Therefore, they rose against the British. People belonging to different groups such as peasants, artisans, adivasis, fakirs and soldiers revolted against the British. Peasants were exploited during the East India Company's rule. Therefore, there was a deep discontent amongst them. In the period from 1763 to 1857, the peasants in Bengal rose in rebellion under the leadership of the sannyasis first and later that of the fakirs. Similar revolts took place in Gujarat, Rajasthan and South India as well. The Adivasis and the forest-dwelling tribes in India also challenged British power. The British laws had deprived them of their right to earn a livelihood from the forest wealth. The Kolams of the Chota Nagpur region, the Gonds of Odisha, the Kolis, Bhils and the Ramoshis of Maharashtra revolted against the British. The Santhals in Bihar rose in rebellion on a very large scale. For several years, the British had to undertake military campaigns to suppress their revolt. The uprising of Umaji Naik in Maharashtra was also very fierce. He organized the Ramoshis and revolted against the British. He issued a proclamation making an appeal to the people to fight against the British and to overthrow their rule. He was hanged in 1832. The Gadkaris in the Kolhapur region and the Fond Savans in the Konkan revolted against the British. Before 1857, some landlords, princes and rulers in different parts of India had also risen against the British repression. The Indian soldiers in the British army had also revolted against their officers time and again. Two of these revolts, one at Vellore in 1806 and the other at Barakpur in 1824, were of a very intense nature. All these revolts against the British were of a localized character and isolated ones. Therefore, the British could suppress them. But even then, the discontent among the people was only suppressed. It did not die out. This simmering discontent finally exploded in the form of the uprising of 1857. It was as if a spark had suddenly set a storehouse of ammunition on fire. In 1857, the anti-British discontent seething in the different sections of the Indian society burst out in the form of an unparalleled armed revolt. The Causes for the Uprising of 1857 In the pre-British period, a change in the ruling power did not affect the life of the village community. The British, however, destroyed the existing order and replaced it with a new one. This created a feeling of instability and insecurity in the minds of the Indians. This feeling grew with time. Economic Causes Because of the new revenue system introduced by the British, the peasants were impoverished. Indian industries were ruined due to the British trade policy. Many artisans lost their livelihood. They developed a strong resentment against the British. The soldiers who were in the service of the princely states became jobless when the British brought these states under their position. These soldiers, too, became strong opponents of the British. Social Causes The British rulers interfered in many traditions and customs in the Indian society. They made acts like the Sati Prevention Act and the act allowing widow marriages. People thought that the alien government was trying to destroy their way of life by passing such acts. They resented it. Political Causes From 1757 onwards, the British had destroyed many Indian kingdoms. Between 1848 and 1856, Lord Dalhousie abolished many more states. He dethroned the Nawab of Awadh under the pretext of mismanagement and took possession of his princely state. 
He abolished the princely states of Satara, Jhansi, Nagpur, and others by rejecting the right of inheritance of the adopted sons of the rulers. He stopped making annual payments to the successors of some of the deposed kings. All this resulted in the spread of a great discontent among them. Discontent among the Indian soldiers. The British officers treated their Indian soldiers with contempt. No post higher than that of a subedar was ever given to them. Indian soldiers were paid less salary than their white counterparts. The allowances initially paid to them were also reduced gradually. On account of many such reasons, the feeling of discontent among the Indian soldiers grew stronger. The immediate cause. In 1856, the British gave the Indian soldiers long-range Enfield rifles and a new type of greased cartridges to be used in them. The soldiers had to bite open these cartridges. The news that the greased covering of the cartridges contained the fat of cows or of pigs hurt the religious sentiments of the Hindus as well as the Muslims, and the soldiers were enraged. The flare-up. The first salvo of the uprising was fired on 29 March 1857 in the Barakpur cantonment. The British officer who was forcing the use of these cartridges was shot by Mangal Pandey. Mangal Pandey was arrested and hanged. This news spread to other military cantonments in the country like wildfire. The entire battalion of Indian soldiers in Meerut cantonment rose in revolt. The soldiers began their march towards Delhi. On the way, they were joined by thousands of common people. As they reached Delhi, the Indian soldiers from the British cantonment there joined them. Bahadur Shah Jafar, the Mughal emperor, was given the leadership of this uprising. He was proclaimed the emperor of India. The scope of the revolt. The revolt spread to the whole of North India in no time. Indian soldiers in the British cantonments, right from Bihar up to Rajasthan, raised the standard of revolt. Many people joined them. Within a period of three to four months after the revolt began in May, it spread to East Punjab, the areas around Delhi, Rohilkhand, Bundelkhand, Allahabad, Awadh, and West Bihar. The uprising also spread to South India. There were revolts at places like Nagpur, Satara, Kolhapur, and Nargund. Women also took part in the 1857 uprising. Local revolts like the uprising of the Bhils in Khandesh, under the leadership of Kajar Singh, and the one in the Satpura region under Shankar Shah, were crushed by the British. About 400 Bhil women had taken part in the uprising in Khandesh. Leadership of the revolt. Though the Mughal emperor was given the leadership of the revolt, the uprising was actually led by Nana Sahib Peshwa, Tatya Tope, Rani Lakshmi Bai, Begum Hazrat Mahal, Maulavi Ahmadullah, Kumar Singh, and the Mughal commander Bakht Khan. The intensity of the uprising was greater in Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Jhansi, and the West Bihar regions. Bakht Khan shouldered the responsibility of defending Delhi. The British concentrated all their might on capturing Delhi. They captured Delhi in September 1857. They arrested Bahadur Shah and killed his sons. Nana Sahib Peshwa and Tatya Tope led the revolt in the Kanpur region. Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi proclaimed the independence of Jhansi and went to war against the British. Kumar Singh, the landlord of Jagdishpur in Bihar, himself took up arms against the British. In Rohilkhand, Maulavi Ahmadullah inspired the people to rise against the British. Suppression of the uprising. The rebels and their leaders fought against the British, putting their own lives at stake. But the British soon overcame the initial shock of the sudden uprising. Within the next six months, the picture began to change. The British recaptured most of the important places they had lost. Rani Lakshmi Bai. Kumar Singh and Ahmadullah lost their lives on the battlefield. Bahadur Shah was put in prison at Rangoon. Nana Sahib and Begum Hazrat Mahal took asylum in Nepal. Tatya Tope continued his fight against the British for more than ten months. However, due to treachery, he fell into the hands of the British. The British then hanged him. Thus, 
the British had suppressed the uprising ruthlessly by the end of 1858. The Nature of the Uprising The uprising of 1857 began as an outburst of the discontent of the Indian soldiers. Later, common people like peasants, artisans and craftsmen also joined the rebellion. Landlords, princes and members of royal families also joined the revolt. It was a great armed struggle of the Indians to free themselves from the oppressive domination of the British. Hindus, Muslims, members of various castes and tribes, the nobility and the common people all took part in the uprising. Their common objective was to drive the British out of India. Therefore, this uprising acquired a broad national dimension. Why did the uprising fail? The revolt of 1857 was an event of great magnitude, but it did not end the British rule in India. This was because the uprising was not well coordinated and there was no centralized leadership. Those who fought in the uprising did not have sufficient arms. The educated Indians and the majority of the rulers of the princely states kept themselves away from the uprising. On the other hand, the British had a unified leadership, a disciplined army, modern weapons and experienced commanders. They had control over transport and communication. Therefore, the Indians were unable to overcome them. Although the uprising failed, the sacrifice of those who fought in the uprising was not in vain. It inspired the future generations of Indians. The British power was shaken due to this revolt. The Effects of the Uprising The uprising of 1857 had far-reaching effects. The rulers in Britain realized that the uprising was the result of an intense feeling of discontent against the British among the Indians. They were convinced that the British power in India was not safe in the hands of the East India Company. Therefore, in 1858, they passed the act of abolishing the rule of the East India Company in India. The British Parliament took charge of the affairs of India. Queen's Proclamation In November 1858, Queen Victoria of England issued a proclamation addressing the Indian people. She declared that the Indian people were her subjects and that no discrimination would be made amongst her subjects on account of race, religion, caste or place of birth and further that the government jobs would be given strictly according to merit. She also promised that the government would not interfere in the religious matters of the Indians. The proclamation also promised that all treaties made with the Indian princes would be honored and no state would be annexed in future. The Reorganization of the British Army The British Army in India was reorganized. The number of European soldiers and officers in the army was increased. Indian battalions were rearranged on the basis of caste. The control of the artillery was placed entirely in the hands of the British officers. The objective behind all this was to prevent Indian soldiers from coming together and rising in rebellion once again. Change of Policy After 1857, the British made changes in their internal policy also. They decided not to interfere with the social matters in India. But at the same time, the British government constantly tried to prevent the Indians from being socially united. The British resorted to the policy of divide and rule in order to consolidate their empire in India. The uprising of 1857 had a deep impact on the Indians also. In place of regional loyalties, there began to emerge a national spirit. Since all the ways of fighting the British had failed, Indians began to realize the need to look for new ways.